Hello, in this first module of the advanced course, we're going to be looking at the kinds of analysis that are needed to achieve the multiple SDGs, to achieve poverty reduction and environmental sustainability together, so that people and nature thrive together. This requires an integrated approach to analysis. Why? Why do we need to focus on this? Because that interdependence of people and nature has been ignored so far. So what we tend to find is that a kind of single issue analysis leads to a poverty reduction program that is completely blind to its environmental effects or an environmental uh, program such as a national park that is blind to the social effects. And with population pressure, with pressure on the environment, we can no longer afford to inform programs that lead to this kind of lose-lose outcome. We need to understand the interactions between society and ecology to get more of the win-win so that people and nature thrive together. The problem we face is that analysts tend to work in silos. Economists are often uh, dominant in analysis, and that's fine, but they do tend to entrench rather narrow views of what poverty is based on income and some aspects of wealth, and they optimize financial outcomes. Ecologists too have a rather narrow view of nature and its importance and, and offer information on, on things like species, which doesn't necessarily uh, uh, show a strong interaction with uh, people's well-being. So, but this isn't just a technical fight between professional disciplines. A lot of the problems of poverty and environment have very political root causes. And the political economy of how people and nature work well together or are clashing, this is often ignored in the analysis to inform programs to the SDGs. And also outside the analytical system, generally are indigenous peoples and local communities who have very strong cultural knowledge of how people and nature are bound together. And they're too often excluded from our analysis. We heard in the introductory course how an integrated approach has been called for ever since the 1972 Stockholm Conference, which introduced the idea of sustainable development, and the Rio Agreements, and Johannesburg Agreements, and Paris Agreements have all been calling for this integrated approach. Analysts in many disciplines are now in a really good position to help lead that process to true integration, to feed us with the right kind of information about how poverty and environment problems work uh, together in a given country, in a given sector, or for a given uh, group, if they come together in ways we explain in the module. There have been, in recent years, many analytical advances that are more integrated, and we can now deploy them to pre prepare big picture analyses that can really inform the SDGs, not just with better facts, but by getting all the actors on the same page. The United Nations programme Poverty Environment Action has been an innovator in testing and bringing together many forms of integrated analysis. And they have a strong proof of concept about how these can be used in the SDGs. This is covered in the handbook Sustainable Development in Practice that informs uh, the modules on this course. Uh, there's no time here to go into detail on actually how to apply these analytical tools, but some, some thoughts from the PEA's experience. Firstly, it's pretty clear that we should be using existing systems in a country, existing systems of analysis. Many countries have a formalized environmental impact assessment, strategic environmental assessment, natural capital accounting, whatever is there that exists, this is a good basis to begin so we can bring analysis embedded in the system. And we might then introduce them to other uh, approaches. For example, nexus frameworks informed by ecology and sociology. These show how the, for example, the energy system 
and the water system and the food system are linked. How they depend upon one another, how they're mutually vulnerable. So this uh, Nexus framework can be developed for a situation, say a flood type situation, how would this affect energy supplies and food? So Nexus frameworks is one. A second approach is multidimensional poverty analysis. Um, and many people have developed different approaches to this, but in an essence, this helps us to see how the environment affects people's health, their livelihoods and jobs, and their vulnerability to environmental change. This enriches the uh, understanding of what poverty is beyond income deprivation. A further form of analysis that really helps to strengthen a, a, a true picture of poverty environment interactions are different forms of participatory analysis, where people are given the opportunity to map and discuss their own assessment about how they feel um, they are being deprived or they're uh, gaining in wealth through the use of environment. Poverty environment um, issues are deeply local and uh, distributional and spatial analyses are really important so that we can see who are the winners, who are the losers across different stakeholder groups, across time and space. So distributional and spatial approaches are extremely important here. The economists, as I've mentioned, are often quite dominant in the development field in terms of um, determining where resources should go. Over the last two decades, different approaches to environmental economic analysis have helped to really inform the way we internalise the value of the environment and the cost of its loss. PEA um, declares that it's perhaps its most powerful cases for change have strongly depended upon showing the costs of action and the costs of, of inaction. Finally, as I mentioned, it's deeply political, the interaction of poverty and environment, and forms of political economy analysis that can draw out people's motivations, their various powers and the process of how change can happen, how change has happened. That form of context analysis through political economy tools is, can be extremely helpful. Two last things we might say uh, about integrated analysis. Firstly, they really need to be decision-centered. They need to inform decisions. We're not talking simply about an academic treatise here. We want to be able to apply them to the decisions made throughout the policy cycle. And finally, the more PEA found that this form of integrated analysis is used, the more it promotes discussion about the new metrics, ideas of what success is, beyond GDP to different forms of well-being analysis, for example beyond looking narrowly at wealth to true, full wealth accounting of all forms of, of capital assets.